Lately I've been using a lot of historic woods and this wood comes to you in all shapes, sizes, uh, and conditions. This wood, which I'll tell you about later, uh, is pretty significant. It's uh, about 200 years old from the structure that it was built in. It's fairly dry and unstable, so today I'm gonna stabilize it. To stabilize wood, I use a product known to many of you called cactus juice. It's a stabilizing resin. Uh, it's a very simple process. You get the cactus juice and a vacuum chamber, put the wood in there, pour the stabilizing juice in with it, and essentially vacuum the air out of it. And what you're doing is pulling the air out and replacing it with the resin to make the wood hard. When I do stabilizing, I have this little cart that I, I keep everything on. I keep my resins at the bottom, gloves, foil here on the shelf, and then my pump and vacuum are up top. And the backside gives me a place to, to wrap everything up. And after the vacuuming process is done, I'll show you what we do to, to harden the blanks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the wood in the pot and get it started. You'll see all the air come out. It almost looks like boiling water because there's so much air in the wood and we wanna get all that out of there. So I'm a little light on resin. This is all I had left today. But I'm gonna make a go of it. And what I do, since I have the resin already in here, so I'm just gonna float these in. And then obviously we want to get resin all around it. So I use these old metal rings. They're really heavy. And I'll just kind of position these to sink the wood. And you can see there, it's all under the resin now. And I got about an inch on top of it. You wanna have at least a good inch, I would say, or more. Typically, I'll put a lot more in, because I, I tend to leave this in the pot when I'm not using it, unless I wanna to switch to a colored resin. Like this one you can see has blue. Um, but because this is a metal pot, I haven't found that it hurts it at all to have it in there. Okay, so this is the glass top. Because this is stabilizing resin, you have to have a glass top or a chamber that's made specifically for stabilizing resin. If you use acrylic and use the wrong kind, it'll essentially just waste away. The resin attacks it and the fumes just crack it to, to pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here. I like to get it, make sure it's in the right spot and then I'll fire up the pump. And what you'll see in there is all that air start to come out. It'll take a few seconds to, to get a nice vacuum going. You can already see the, the air coming through there. And on certain woods, it'll look, it'll just boil with air coming out of there, just keep coming and coming and coming. So you'll see a lot of little bubbles, you'll see big bubbles where just big bursts are coming out. And I'm gonna run this probably, I'm guessing with this piece of wood, it'll take a good half hour to 45 minutes of just vacuuming to suck all the air out. Once I've done that, I wanna let it sit at least that long. And in some cases, if I'm not in a hurry, I might let it sit in there an extra day just to make sure all the resin gets in every little possible spot. And I found when I leave it longer, I get a nice hard piece and it's much more dense than if I am rushing through it. But you definitely need to leave it at least as long as you vacuum, you need to leave it soaking in the resin. So this is gonna take a while. I'm gonna let this vacuum. And when I go to, to harden it, I'll be back with the camera. I've let the wood soak. It's actually soaked for about a full day. What I'm gonna do is take my weights out, let everything drip off here. And then I've got some foil just laid out and I'm gonna wrap each block in the foil. So I'll take out the big one first. And just picking up this block of wood it was fairly light before. It's probably doubled, tripled, quadrupled in weight. It's really heavy now. And that's what we're after, is we're getting all that air out and filling it with the resin. So once I get this out, I'm gonna wrap it in foil. And just wrap it as snugly as you can. If these were individually cut blanks, you could wrap them, uh, you wanna roll them individually. And and the reason I wrap these is when you are baking them, you don't want the resin to fall out before it has a chance to set. You want it to, to have a 
chance to bake into the wood. So now I'm gonna put this in my toaster oven. On a bigger piece like this, I'll usually run it at 225 or 250 until the temp gets to 200. It needs to hit 200 for at least an hour or two. Doing it a little longer won't hurt. Uh, so I always make sure and go a little further than a little shorter. This, all this information, the best place you can, you can find this, and it's where I get my, my cactus juice, is at turntex.com. Curtis over there knows everything there is to know about stabilizing wood. If you have any questions, he's a great resource, and you can get all your supplies there. You can get chambers, you can get the cactus juice. Uh, so I really recommend checking that out if you're new to this. That's where I pretty much learned all my stuff is from him and his posts on other forums. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake this and it'll be a perfect stabilized blank. Thanks for watching.